Sister O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Check out this really cool machine. Isn't that an awesome machine? <laughs> what do you mean it's not a machine? Of course it's a machine. We just need to expand your definition of what is a machine. In physics, a machine is anything that transfers force and motion. That's it. It doesn't matter what it's made from or what it does, just that transfers force and motion. There's six basic types of simple machines, some of which you've probably heard of by now. Pulleys, wheel and axle, inclined planes, wedges, screws, and levers, which are the primary simple machine of pop-ups. A lever, and yes, I know some people say lever, but I'm from Texas, so I say lever, y'all, has two main parts, a beam and a fulcrum, a point around which the beam pivots or turns. This kind of looks like a seesaw, which makes sense since a seesaw is a type of lever, complete with beam and fulcrum. With this lever, when you apply a force, what we call effort, down on one side, the lever applies a force, what we call the load, up on the other side. It transfers the force and the motion, making it a machine. In the case of pop-ups, the effort is the process of opening up the card. The force and motion from opening the card is then applied to the pop-ups inside, the loads. And the folds are the fulcrums for the pop-ups. Pop-ups may not be traditionally thought of as machines, but because they transfer the force and motion of opening them, they are, in fact, machines. And because they are machines, we can make some cool inventions with them. Let's pop open some understanding. Remember, inventing is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're an invention convention sponsored by the David and Gene Wiley Foundation to make pop-ups. Technically, the term is paper engineering, which makes sense because you're engineering pop-ups out of paper. To make pop-ups, or to paper engineer, you'll need cardstock. I know it's called paper engineering, but paper doesn't always work very well. You're gonna want something stiffer like cardstock. Scissors, a ruler, a pencil or two, and glue. This video, just like all of our other inventing videos, is about you being inventive. I'm gonna show you some basic tips and techniques so that you can paper engineer on your own and create your own projects. The first thing to get started is folding a base. Take a piece of cardstock and fold it in half. You really need to crease this well. In fact, one of the most important things in paper engineering is to crease any folds well by going back and forth a few times. I'm gonna show you one of the most basic types of pop-up folds, the V-fold. For this example, I'm going to use a four inch by eight and a half inch strip of cardstock, but the V-fold can be any size. As you practice your paper engineering and start creating artwork for them, you can design your own V-fold sizes. I'm going to fold this example strip in half, but just like the strip can be any size, you can fold it at any point you want. While there are some rules to paper engineering, which I'm going to discuss in a minute, having the same size on both sides of the fold is not one of them, but make sure you crease it. We need to make tabs to glue down the V-fold. First, fold up about one quarter to one third of an inch of an edge up. Crease it really well and unfold. To finish your tabs, cut the corners off the edge you have just creased. See, I have two sides and each side has a gluing tab. Like I said, there are some rules to paper engineering and we need to go over them before you start gluing down your V-fold. Rule one. First, a pop-up must cross a fold. When I close this properly placed V-fold, the fold collapses flat. Here, I have a V-fold off to the side of the center fold. When I try to close it, it won't collapse. Rule two. Second, a pop-up must be balanced over a fold. Here, even though the V-fold crosses the center fold, the angle on the left and right are different. It isn't balanced. So, when I try to close it, it doesn't work properly. But don't worry, I'll show you a trick to help make sure it is balanced without having to measure. Rule three. The third rule is more about how to make your pop-up even bigger. Every pop-up adds folds and more pop-ups can be added to those folds. In other words, a simple V-fold can have more pop-ups added to it at its folds to make it more complex. With those three rules in mind, now we can glue on that V-fold. Remember rule one, 
Hold up the V fold so its fold is over the base fold. Open it or close it as much as you like, then mark it with a pencil. Fold it flat and check to make sure it doesn't stick beyond the edge, unless you want it to. Keep in mind that V folds fold in the direction they are pointing. So if you put it too far forward or too far backward, it will stick out the front or back when folded flat. Once you're happy with the location, put some glue on one tab and glue it to the side of the base. Generally, you'll want the tab behind your pop-up. Now fold up the V-fold, or really, whatever pop-up you're making, with the second tab on top. And here's the trick to make sure you follow rule two. Put glue on the second tab and close the base. Press it shut for a few seconds to allow the glue to set. So that's it. Rather than trying to glue down both tabs to an open base, if you glue down one tab, then glue the second tab to the closed base, you're guaranteed balance and your pop-up will work. Now this is, like I said, the basic V-fold. Technically, this is called a right angle V-fold because it stands more or less straight up and down. But there are some variations you can try on the same basic fold. By folding and cutting tabs on the strip so the crease is longer than the edges creates an acute angle V-fold, which will lean back instead of standing up straight. By folding and cutting tabs on the strip along the diagonal creates a special acute angle V-fold called a pointed V-fold. By folding and cutting tabs on the strip so the crease is shorter than the edges, you create an obtuse angle V-fold which will lean forward. You can even fold and cut tabs on the strip from the crease so the edges are different lengths to make an asymmetric V-fold, or not the same on both sides. This causes it to lean to one side. It looks complicated, but if you follow the gluing guidelines we did earlier, it will be balanced. And there are decorative enhancements you can give your V-folds. For example, you can use them in combination to create a cool layered look to it. Or you can cut out parts of them so that you can see through into other sides. There are all kinds of different variations you can take to get really inventive with your paper engineering. One of the best ways to get ideas is to look at how other paper engineers have used V-folds in their creations, like these from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Robert Sabuda. While some like this one are pretty obvious, some are hidden, like this one in the tree. Here's the crease on the fold so it opens up. The only limit to your paper engineering is your imagination and how much you want to make your projects pop. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from Children's Museum Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.